Hey, guess what? It's 11 o'clock and uh, we just want to start on time to get to the bottom of some things, some very important things. And one of the things that we wouldn't allow is those politicians, especially those so-called rulers in Guyana, to brainwash people or to spread their propaganda. And so there are a few things that I just want to fix and ensure that those of you who are watching this morning uh, I must say good morning to all of you and welcome to uh, this 11 o'clock hour. I'm not sure how long I'll be on for, maybe half hour, if I can get all of the stuff done within half hour uh, to show you the type of individual this guy is. So when he sits at this press conference and he tries to portray himself as though, uh, you know, as though he is some sort of an angel, you know, uh, he's not an angel. And my first uh, impression is that you just don't buy into the things that he has said at that press conference, yesterday's press conference, that is. And so I just want to break things down for you and to show you the other side of the coin. And what I mean by the other side of the coin is to expose his lies, his, his hypocrisy and all these manner of things. I know a lot of you already know that, uh, but some of his supporters are not going to accept that. Uh, they would believe the lies, any any lies. Well, not all of his supporters, but uh, quite a few of them would believe the lies and so forth. So that is the purpose of this, um, this program this morning is to show you the other side of the coin. Uh, two things that I want to deal with, and I'm not going to go beyond that. I want to talk about the Vice News, uh, his response to the Vice News interview. And as though everything is cozy, as still nothing was wrong. Uh, he thinks that he's talking to a bunch of uh, kindergarten kids that, uh, that those of us who he's talking to, that uh, we are not able to comprehend what really what really um what really came out or what uh sorry about that or what uh, vice news did to expose him he was exposed so what else do you expect do you expect him to come and sit at a press conference to say that he was exposed that he was caught with his pants down he's not going to do that we can't expect him to do that uh especially to sit and admit that a wrong was done 
And so I want to divulge into those uh, two areas. I'm not going to get into any other area. Uh, as you know, the uh, commission, the farce of a commission of inquiry is on its way. Uh, they have uh, selected some former judges. I want to talk about a couple of those former judges as well. And uh, to let you know that it is indeed a farce. It's a political farce. Uh, that's just what it is. It makes absolutely no sense. It proves nothing. It doesn't prove that Jack Deere and the PPP, that they're innocent of any form of wrongdoings or allegations of wrongdoings of rigging and elections. At his press conference yesterday, he did mention that uh, the Ben Shops of the world talked about uh, the PPP rigging the elections and as though that is wrong. So he got the impression that he has somewhat of the monopoly to talk about all allegations of rigging by the coalition. And when he says that, people must believe him, believe what he says. And so I just want to break these things down into pieces. And so um, this guy would not be allowed to get away with his lies and whatever else. So we will get straight into that. Uh, we're not going to waste much time at all. Thank you so much for sharing the link. But that's all I'll say for now. I'll be right back in just about maybe 30 seconds. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for attending this press conference. Um, later today, the president, who is now on his way to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in um, Rwanda, will announce the Commission of Inquiry, as he promised, into the 2020 elections. Um, the last time I spoke here, uh, there was a call by the opposition nominated commissioners, a chief. All right, let's, uh, let's don't waste much time with him. Uh, let's move on. He did say that later today, that was yesterday, that Irfan Ali, who is on his way to, uh, he's in Rwanda or somewhere for the Commonwealth Heads of Government, uh, some sort of meeting. Um, he should not have been there, but because of allegations of rigged elections, he is in office under questionable circumstances. It is a fact that there are two elections petitions currently in the courts, and we'll talk about that as well, and who is timing that process. Who doesn't want the elections petitions to be heard? Where is the better forum to have all of our elections problem uh, be dealt with other than the court? And so these guys do not want these elections petitions to be heard via the court because that is where all of the evidence ought to be presented. But I'll get to that. And you, you already get the message that Jack Dale and the PPP, they do not want the elections petitions to be heard. 
Hence the reason for a COI. This is a makeup COI. This is a fraudulent COI, a commission of inquiry. And I'm not saying fraudulent because I, I am uh, privy to uh, any sort of information that anybody is not guilty of uh, rigged elections. I am saying that if the PPP, they are accusing the PNC or the coalition of rigging the elections without any evidence. And so I cannot sit here and say, firsthand that the coalition did any rigging. However, there is sufficient evidence that came out of the reconct, reconct process that the PPP is actually guilty of rigging the elections, that the PPP was actually installed into office, obviously under questionable circumstances. And I will deal with that bit of evidence that we are all aware of. Uh, but let let me let me let me just give you guys a little uh, background into uh, the dilly dallying with with the elections and any form of COI. Let's begin with this here. Uh, Jack Dale himself. This is what he said two years. Uh, this wasn't sorry. This was last month. Are we still in June? Sorry. This is what he said in June. Government backs away from holding COI into 2020 elections. In other words, in other words, he was running away from a COI. Now, mind you, he's running away from a COI. He's now in the midst of uh, allegations of corruption and bribery, all manner of things heating up on him. Right. And so they knew that the Vice News report was coming out. Of course, you would expect them to say, oh, there's really nothing. It's really soft. It's a, you'll expect them to say that. Right. So what they did, they quickly pop up and say, look, they want suddenly they want a commission of inquiry into the 2020 elections. Right. This is what he said. This is, he said last month or earlier this month that. He has indicated, this is according to Stabrook News, that this is not the route the government wishes to take at this time. This was just a couple of weeks ago. It was not the route a couple of weeks ago. Now, here's my question to you guys. If two or three weeks ago, it was not the route to go, right? If, again, I, I repeat, if two or three weeks ago was not the route to go for or with a commission of inquiry. Why? And then the, the, the big question is, why suddenly this is the route to go? Why suddenly? And that is what we have to ask. Why suddenly? And I want his supporters, his blind, loyal supporters to understand, right? His blind, loyal supporters to understand. Two weeks ago, it was not the route to go. Now it is the route to go. At his press conference yesterday, he announced, you know, he announced that Irfan Ali will announce who those um, members of this so-called, this fake elections, 2020 elections, this fake, and I do mean it, fake elections commission uh, of inquiry is going to be the the members, who those folks are going to be. And we all want to know the folks, right? Don't we? Yes, we do. We all want to know them. But we're just not going to sit and say, okay, Irfan Ali has said uh, X, Y, or Z person is going to be heading that commission. We want to know who they are. And we should. We should get to know who they are. And these are the persons. Uh, Stanley John, Godfrey Smith, Trinidad, uh, Dr. S.Y. Kurashi, out from India, he head of the former head of the Indian Elections Commission, and then you have Kar Singh. And now let's let's begin with Kar Singh, right? And why I do believe that this is a commission of inquiry that will not be fair, it will not be balanced, it will not it will not be transparent but yet it will be hundreds of millions of taxpayers' money is going to be spent to dole out to give friends of the PPP. And now, look, let's, let's begin. Let's begin, with, let's begin with Carl Singh, mind you, and why he should not be on the commission. 
I'll just that's just my take. He should not be on the commission. He will not come over as fear. And so it's the Guyanese people are going to be shafted with a fake elections commi um, a commission of inquiry that Jack Dio and Irfan, they already know what the results are, right? They already know what it is. At his press conference yesterday, Jack Dio actually said, the commission of inquiry, mind you, hasn't started. And this is how silly these guys are. Jack Dio and, and, and his uh, uh, cohorts, and they think that they're smart. They think that they're bright. This is what he said at the Commission of Inquiry. I'm not going to get into that tape, but at his press conference or his gaff shop yesterday, not really a press conference, he just gaffing. He dip on gaffing, as we would say in Guyana, right? At his press conference, he said that the Commission of Inquiry into the 2020 regional and general elections will reveal that the coalition is the culprit or as he said has rigged the elections now wait a minute wait a minute he is part of this installed regime they got together to decide when they're going to have a commission of inquiry who are going to be the participants of this commission of inquiry and then even without the commission of inquiry beginning he says what the, he says exactly what the conclusion would be. This is a game. This is a propaganda by the PPP. And you members of the public should not buy into it. It is a game. Now let's break it down. Why is it a game? It is a game for several reasons, but I, I know I promised to talk about Carl Singh first. Carl Singh was the acting chief justice. He got the position over Claudette Singh. Jack Dale chose Carl Singh, then opposition leader Desmond Hoyt refused to, um, to support a Carl Singh, right? However, he was acting chief justice, went over to become acting chancellor of the judiciary. And he has made some very controversial rulings, right? Some of those rulings, folks can say that actually uh, mostly in favor of the PPP. Now, let's go. That shouldn't surprise you guys, though, right? Uh, this is Carl Singh. This is one of the, uh, an important case dealing with uh, Jack Deal, right? Singh strikes, throws out Jack Deal's race baiting appeal case. There was a race baiting case that was brought against Jack Dale. Uh, I think the person probably um, took it to the uh, appellate court and Carl Singh ruled in favor of Jack Dale. Ruled in favor of Jack Dale. And now, you know, judges can rule in favor of whomever they want to, but the ruling in favor of the PPP, in favor of Jack Dale, seemed to have been consistent as it pertains to uh, Justice Carl Singh. But I want, I want us to move on to something else first. Let us look at this. This is a, the guy in the Times, a PPP propaganda mouthpiece. Uh, look at this headline. It's a letter, uh, a letter to the editor back in 2008. This headline says, a disservice done to Justice Carl Singh. In other words, what the letter writer is saying is that Carl Singh was supposed to have been uh, confirmed as the substantive sorry, um, chancellor of the judiciary. He was not. And so he sat in that position for quite some time. He sat there for quite some time and nothing really happened. I, I bet you probably wouldn't know who actually wrote the letter. This person has said that Justice Carson, who acted as chancellor from April 2005 to February 2017, was nominated. Now, look, I want you guys to see uh, you know, the, the fact that he was nominated by Jack Deal and Donald Ramatar and the opposition refused, refused to support Carl Singh. Now, do you think, and now let's be honest, do you think Carl Singh, Justice Carl Singh, in this commission of inquiry into the March 2020 elections will be fair? will be bipartisan in his ruling? I doubt that. And I know a lot of you may probably agree, but
but I doubt that. I actually doubt it. There's not going to be any fairness coming from Justice Carl Singh at all. Based on the evidence I'm presenting to you guys, mind you, I'm presenting evidence and my opinion. I know some of the um, trenches are on. It's early. They don't like to hear facts. And so it, it happens. That is why they are described as trenchies. But let's get back to Carl Singh and who actually wrote this letter. You want to know who wrote this letter, right? Yeah. Dated January 12, 2018. Manzur Nadir. Oh, yeah. Manzur Nadir. Again, Manzur Nadir, batting for Carl Singh. This letter, he says, a person acting for 12 years could not have been an issue of competence. What was done, whatever the reason for non-consenting, was, was mean to Justice Carl Singh. Sincerely, Manzur Nadir. So Manzur Nadir is saying that the opposition the opposition was mean. Again, Carl Singh, uh, Manzur Nadir's words was mean, mean to Justice Carl Singh, was mean to Justice Carl Singh. And now why is this relevant? It is relevant because this guy, Manzur Nadir, sits there as, you know, you already know, sits there as the Speaker of the National Assembly. Again, again. The question is, the question is, can you expect, can we expect Justice Carl Singh to be fair? Can we expect Justice Carl Singh to render an impartial, an impartial decision on the happenings of the 2020 general and regional elections? What do you think? What do you think? Good. That's for Justice Carr Singh, right? I have absolutely no confidence because uh, I think this is an opportunity for revenge against the opposition. And so uh, the fact that Car um, Barrett Jack Jail mentioned in his press conference yesterday that the commission will prove that the coalition rigged the elections. He is already telling the commission, he is already saying to these members of the commission how they ought to rule and what their findings should be. So if that is the case, why then should there be a commission of inquiry when it is already fixed? It is like you having a, a, a race horse and you know, people already know that the race has been fixed. I am saying to you guys that this selection of the Commission of Inquiry into the 2020 elections has been fixed. And now let's get to Dr. S.Y. Qurashi. We'll get to Dr. S.Y. Qurashi, right? We'll get to him. Who exactly is Dr. Qurashi? Qurashi is an Indian national. He was uh, the head of the Indian, Indian, um, India, sorry, Elections Commission. He was the big chief, elections chief. It's a big guy back there. And um, my only concerns, though, concerning Dr. Korashi, my only concerns thus far about uh, the doctor and his participation in the Commission of Inquiry. Let me say this to you guys. Jack Deo and Irfan didn't go to bed last evening or one night and decided that. Uh, and just grabbed this guy, picked his name out of a hat or somewhere like that. It didn't happen like that. It didn't happen overnight at all. They were able to uh, foster a good relationship with each other, right? And that relationship probably, um, what do you know? Who was the um, chief elections officer uh, when the 2006 seat was stolen from the AFC? Um, who was the... Chief elections, uh, sorry, who was the chairman of GCOM when Sam Hines squatted in that seat, stole a seat from um, GCOM in 2006, stole that seat from the AFC? Um, I think it was Serge Bali, right? But 2011, the attempt was made to rob, rob another seat 
in order to give Donald Ramatar the majority. He was caught. They were caught at GCOM. And so that is how we ended up with a minority president in 2011. And not a big skullduggery at GCOM. I mentioned 2006. I mentioned 2011. And I mentioned in 2015. They couldn't get away with that. But Steve Surridge Bali, hmm, this guy, Dr. S.Y. Kurashi, is part of this commission of inquiry. It just didn't happen just like that. The PVP guys don't go to bed and wake up next morning. Of course, they do a lot of fly-by-night stuff, but they study as to who the members of this commission of inquiry should be. Carl Singh, Dr. Kurashi. And now look, Dr. Kurashi in 2016 was happy, excited. He met with, um, he met with uh, Guyana Elections Commission chairman. Dr. Serge Bali, fourth generation, fourth generation Indian, fourth generation Indian. The two of them are happy to meet. They're happy. Now, don't get me wrong. People are entitled to travel. People are entitled to meet each other. People are entitled to get excited when they meet each other and so forth. And um, interesting, right? I just thought that I'd throw that out there that they didn't just... Uh, pick this guy's name out of a out of a hat just like that. You guys read it between the lines, right? And so with this sort of relationship, this sort of relationship that we're seeing, are you guys still comfortable with this fake, this makeup sort of um, what is it? Commission of inquiry? <laughs> I already ruled it out. It is not. It's, it's a farce. That is what it is. A farce. Nothing more than a farce. That's just what it is. I'm looking for some other stuff uh, that we can show you guys, right? Um, this is what. Um, okay, we're, we're not going to get to that now. But, um, but the relationship is there. And um, and they're all proud of the relationship. They're proud that they've met. They're proud of everything. Um, and, and so, I'm just not too. I'm just not too happy about the. Um, I'm not too happy about this makeup at all. Not at all too happy about it. All right. So what else is happening? Let's get to. Uh, John now, Justice John. Justice John seemed to have uh, some controversies, you know, in terms of his rulings. And when you look at judges and judges have controversies in their ruling, uh, I tend to want to put a question mark over, especially the competency of individuals who are playing a major role in this commission of inquiry. And so we go now to Justice John. We go to Justice John. Not so long ago, there was a ruling, right? And the ruling, this headline says, in an unprecedented admission, Justice John admits he overlooked three charges in arriving at decision, at decision in a case, a Josiah case, right? And look, here's what it says here in the paper. After making what many see as an unprecedented move, High Court Justice Stanley John is expected to return to Trinidad after a short temporary stint in Antigua and Barbuda. During his tenure, John was considered to have delivered several, several, several controversial rulings. The latest one involving Harry Josiah, a former general manager of Transport Board. Now, look, this is not me and my propaganda. This is not me and my propaganda. This is basically what the newspaper is saying. In this case of Josiah, apparently he didn't give the opposition, um, the defense, he didn't uh, do what was supposed to have been done in terms of fairness to the court, fairness to all litigants. He didn't do that. And so he sat in his office, according to the report, mind you, according to the report, it is alleged that he sat in his office and decided the case on his own. And that is why the report is saying controversial. But what is critical? What is critical 
is that look at what the last paragraph says here about Justice John. During his tenure, John was considered to have delivered several controversial rulings, right? Several controversial rulings. Stanley John, there he goes. Look, I'm a little bit bothered about a judge who sits in his chambers or her chambers and render a decision without proper due process, without following the laws within that governs the, the, the judicial system. He didn't do that according, again, according to the report. And that is why I'm uncomfortable with Stanley John as well. I've given you my reasons why I'm uncomfortable with Kar Singh, Korashi, and now Stanley John. But later, I will give my reason why I'm also uncomfortable, uncomfortable, sorry, with Godfrey Smith. But for now, what else can we deal with um, concerning the elections and the commission of inquiry? Jack Dew is saying that the commission of inquiry, he, he is just out on a mission to prove that they haven't done anything wrong. That is the only mission. And they want to ensure that there is a forum, that there is something that even if they can set up to go out there to say to their support base and to say to some members of the international committee, uh, community that they have done nothing wrong in the elections of 2020. That is not true. And people are not going to buy into that. Sensible people are not going to buy into that. You guys who are watching this show right now are not going to buy into this commission of inquiry. Because again, as stated earlier, it is a farce. It is fake. It is set up. The game has already been set. The results have already been set. And nothing fair will come out of this absolutely nothing at all. It is money for the boys. This will cost taxpayers of Guyana over a quarter billion dollars, just like the amount of money wasted in the Linden Commission of Inquiry, and that was hundreds of millions of dollars. This here is going to be more, because to bring this guy, Dr. Korashi, from India, all the way from India, he is not going to be charging pennies. He's not going to be charging 10000 per day. It could very well be twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 uh, per day, U.S. dollars, that is. So this is going to cost a heck of a lot of money, right? Now, again, I'm just not comfortable with this at all. Now, this commission of inquiry, why is it so important to Jack Deal and the PPP. Why is it so important? Like I have outlined earlier, it is important because they want a forum where they can prove, they can set things up, they can cook things up, and they can prove. But we're not going to buy that. The elections petitions ought to be heard in the court. And in the court is where we will get all of the evidence. I don't want Jack Deere to tell me that um, Norton's body language talks about SOPs. All of the SOPs are in the court. They can be heard via the elections petitions. But who is timing the process? Who? Not Norton, not the coalition, but who is timing the process? Not the bench cops of the world, or not the Sherrod Duncans of the world. Nobody else is timing the process, but the PPP. Hence my reason, and I keep asking this question, and I will continue to ask this question. The question is, what exactly? The question is, why is Jack Teo and Irfan Ali and the PPP, why are they so afraid of the two elections petitions. Why do they keep stopping the court from hearing the election petition? Every time there is a matter, the attorney general jumps in and files an appeal to stop it. They want, they want it to be stopped. They want it to be kicked out. They want it to be prolonged for as long as possible, just as what happened with the 1997 general and regional elections petition that was heard over four years after. 
And I'm saying this to you. We don't have to just go to a nursery school or the university, uh, the fake university of Eiffelot, right? We don't have to go to those schools to have common sense. If they're not afraid of anything, as Jack Dale claims, then why are they timing the process? Why are they stopping the elections petition? There is what's going to happen. At the elections petitions, every party will have to submit their SOPs and all of the evidence in the court of law, not outside of the courtroom through some makeshift uh, commission of inquiry where uh, they handpicked, they handpicked, right? Their folks handpicked, their folks handpicked, their folks. to conduct a so-called investigations. Their folks, these guys are their folks. These guys are their people. These guys will render a decision in favor of who is paying them, who is putting them up, who is gonna give them a fancy car and a driver and security to move around in Guyana with sirens and, and all manner of things. Now, Jack Dale has said that people with evidence, with evidence, will be summoned. People like whom? Here is where, again, it is wrong. Jack Dale and the PPP have charged, right? Have charged several persons, several persons, not because of any evidence but because they wanted, their intention was to divert attention, divert attention. And so they grab all these people, Llewellyn Field, uh, Clement Mingo, Roxanne Myers, Enrique Levan, and uh, uh, Suffren February and so forth, Valda Lawrence, um, Carl Joseph, and charge them with electoral fraud. No evidence, none whatsoever, none whatsoever. This matter, their matters are before the court. Now, if the court has not adjudicated on this here, there was no decision. And every time these people go to court, every single time these people go to court, you know what happens? The court is wasting their time and a waste of taxpayers' money to persecute these people with no evidence. Every single time these people go to court so that this case can start, guess what? They can't start the case. The prosecutors or whomever, they don't show up. They keep putting it off. Over two years now, they keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. That's what they keep doing. Now, tell me, who exactly, who exactly can they summon? Can these retired judges in this fake commission of inquiry, do they have the powers? Well, I know they're going to say, if I'm going to say he gave them uh, presidential powers and they can, they can uh, in this commission of inquiry, they have all the powers of judges. Well, that is where it comes in. Someone could take this to court, take this commission of inquiry to court, block it. You block it not because you have anything to hide. You block it because it's a farce, it's unfair, and it's unjust because there will be no one going. And they shouldn't have the power to subpoena anybody to this here at all. Mind you, right? That's just my opinion. Now, you have key people that they claimed have participated in the rigging of elections. Their allegations haven't been proven as yet. These folks go to court all the time. And then there's nothing coming out of this. Now, you know, when people go to court, what happened, right? There's a, there's a thing that's called sub -judice. And it simply means under judicial consideration and therefore prohibited uh, from public discussion elsewhere, the cases were still sub -judice. It simply means that these folks, Roxanne Myers and others who have been unjustly charged cannot say anything at all. So it will be illegal for them to be summoned to this makeshift, makeshift, mind you, makeshift COI. So who is really going to go there? 
Who is going to say what? I hope Roysdale Ford uh, is watching and or maybe some of the other lawyers in the coalition can challenge this, this fake COI, right? A subjudice. You, you can't. Roxanne Myers, Lowenfield, Mingo, and uh, um, others, including Walter Lawrence, they cannot say nothing, anything at all until the matter is over. The subjudice rule simply means that when a legal matter or controversy has come under the jurisdiction of a court, nobody, including the press and other media, should interfere by publication or public clamor with the court's proper handling of the proceedings. Simple as that. So this whole thing about an elections commission of inquiry is fake. It's farce. It's a propaganda by the PPP. And it's basically to divert attention from the real issues affecting Guyanese. Bad governance, corruption, allegations of bribery, racism, and all manner of things. That is why Jack Dewan and Irfan Ali decided on this circus of a commission of inquiry. That's my opinion on that. I'll give you my opinion on the Sioux gate and what and what Jack Dale is doing again to divert attention, to make himself appear clean when there is a possibility, when there is a possibility that he may not be as clean as he wants us to believe that he is clean. So we will be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We still have a few more minutes, and I just want to make it clear again that the uh, Commission of Inquiry into the 2020 elections is a farce. It's a big hoax. It's a waste of taxpayers' monies, and nothing proper will come out of that. Again, I call on the PPP because they are they are party to the allegations. They are being accused of rigging the elections. They are being accused of ins of being installed there look look at all of the allegations leveled against them right uh with what they did they stormed the um gcom headquarters uh, with their fake and pretentious uh move about uh, rigging of an elections when there's no evidence and they're the ones again they're preventing the uh elections petition from being heard and look at this uh, 47 boxes, ballot boxes without statutory documents, electoral malpractices, you name it. All these things, um, all leaning and, and, and pointing towards the PPP. You know, uh, 4,864 absent voters, 150 stuck ballot boxes, 1,278 missing oaths of identity. Who you think can, can get all of this? The court, it's already in the hands of the court. But Jack Dale doesn't want that to happen. You know, he's accustomed as he painting himself as an angel, accustomed being around persons of questionable character and uh, 
death squad members and all these manner of things uh uh, this guy here is one of the guys that uh, Jack Davis standing next to there in that picture. Uh, Mark Kazarki, he was part of a death squad, a killing squad uh, during Jack Davis' murderous years in office when hundreds of persons were slaughtered. You know, drug lords were uh, helter-skelter running the show in Guyana. Obviously, people uh, suspect that it was with the help of the PPP when Jack Dale was uh, head of the country. So I just thought I'd remind you guys that he is really, really not this angel he wants to portray himself to be. But before we get into uh, this, this Vice News interview, of course, Jack Dale is going to uh, sit there and pretend as though he's innocent. It's okay for people to sit and pretend that they're innocent, but people who are watching are not stupid people. Well, at least most of us are not. And so, you know, swiftly, Isabel, Isabella responded. And Isabella says, look, uh, in her Twitter account, uh, Isabella says, when we asked the vice president, well, her term, because I don't see him as a vice president of Guyana, if he took large scale bribes, he suggested we were lying, meaning vice news. Now it's clear his close friend Sue told us the same. And we saw it. We heard Sue said it. He accuses him of lying. I know Jack Davis accusing Sue of lying. Isabel Young, Isabel Young is asking here, someone is certainly lying. Who then is lying? Who then is lying? If his good friend Sue said he Jack Deal takes bribe, accused, you know, says he Jack Deal takes bribe. It's an allegation, mind you. It's what Sue is saying. I don't know. You, you guys are reading between the lines, right? This thing here, this here is very interesting. But before I get to that, uh, Jack Dale said that under the coalition, he said under the coalition, they investigated his money, his wealth. I have never seen, neither have I read anything of that sort. He spoke of the Integrity Commission, which was a farce for years under the PPP, it was a farce. He tries to give, he tried to give the impression that under the coalition, they disbanded it. That's it, they didn't want anything to do with it. That is not true, that's a lie. Hopefully Norton and them will deal with that, right? But that's a lie. For years, the Integrity Commission was saddled with a bunch of incompetent individuals, individuals who were afraid to ask Jack Deere for his, uh, you know, submit your documents. And for years, they have not submitted anything to the Integrity Commission. So for him to hold on to the Integrity Commission as though it is something uh, like a Bible or a Quran or a Bhagwan Gita or something that you've got to hold on to with some sort of value, when he himself has no value, no respect for members or even the constitutional agency of the Integrity Commission. Now he talks about his bank account and everything and, and Sue pays him his thing and the bank knows where he gets his money from. Um, I'm not sure that the bank knows all of that, but the public needs to know that. How come a man who was filthy poor lived out of a little shop out in Kitty, a little mango selling shop out of Kitty, um, suddenly is one of the richest men in the Caribbean and probably in the world. Um, you know, so, but we'll, we'll get it. He said that there was an investigation and it was proven that uh, he's just, uh, you know, he works hard for his money and everything is transparent and that Sue went into his home and they, they tried to catch him inside of his home and they couldn't do it. You know, who said that they didn't? Show any prosecutor in the United States of America that. Show any prosecutor that. He tries to say that it was an entrapment. And, and, and mind you where he was coming with that. It is if the matter comes up, such a matter comes up in uh, a U.S. jurisdiction, uh, then he can use that term. It was an entrapment. They tried to entrap him. And it didn't work. It didn't work. Now, he knew that Sue was bringing uh, so-called business people over to him. He knew because he lives a stone throw from Sue in his house that he bought for almost one million U.S. dollars. I'm not sure that the bank would question him. Do you think GBTI would question him? 
Do you think Republic Bank would question him or any of the banks questioning him? Where you got your money from? Where Sue works? He said that he doesn't know where Sue works. He said that he doesn't know how Sue makes a living, but yet he accepts money from Sue. Yet Sue lives in his house right next door to him. Isn't that convenient? Isn't that really? Isn't it convenient that a man like Sue is right next to you? Just in case there's any sort of business deals, just in case, mind you, that's how I'm seeing it. Just in case there's some sort of a business deal, Sue can just walk right over. And we saw that. We saw that. So let him not pretend as though he's all innocent and that there's nothing that came out of that Vice News report. Let him not pretend that at all. Now, he did say that the previous administration, the coalition government, investigated him and his bank account and, and they found nothing. What if I were to tell you that that is not true? He was never investigated. Maybe he was on the radar and probably still on the radar of uh, outside law enforcement agencies. Maybe he's still on the radar of outside law enforcement agencies, right? Um, I don't know, but I want to ask, and I hope Jack Deere would take the time to respond um, to the Ben Shops of the world and all of you who are watching this show here today. Um, I want to ask him, and I know he's probably watching too. I want to ask him if he's familiar with this country, Zaire. I just want to ask him. It's somewhere in Africa, right? As you can see the location and where exactly it is. And now there's a reason why I want to ask Jack Deere this question, since he said that under the coalition, they did some sort of investigations and uh, nothing came out of it. Again, I don't know what sort of investigations they're talking about at all. I just don't know because there was no investigations as far as I'm aware. And maybe Aubrey Norton can, the leader of the opposition can say whether there was in fact any investigations into Jack Dale's bank account, none whatsoever. Now let's get back to Zaire. Hmm. I wanna ask Jack Deere if he has any contacts or anything in his possession from this. And now these are all questions, mind you, just questions. And were I at his so-called press conference, I would have been asking him about Zaire. So I'm not at his talk shop, this guy's at, as a press conference. I'm, I'm, I'm not there, but I'm asking this publicly about Zaire. Zaire, this particular country, this country here, Zaire, right? All right. Uh, I, I guess maybe Jack Deere gets the hint as to where I'm coming from with this. All right. Okay. Zaire. Zaire. All right. Zaire. Okay. Zaire. Okay. Good. So it's up there. The other question I want to ask Jack Deere is if he has a passport, if he is the holder of a passport from Zaire. That's all I want to ask. No accusations, nothing. It's just a question. I'm asking this question. It's just a question. Mind you, you see my facial expression. It's just a question. And the question is, if he's familiar with this country, he should be, right? If he's familiar with the country, right? And the other question is, if he has a passport, if he's the holder of this passport from Zaire, maybe not under his name, and maybe some folks close to him could shed some light as to whether he does. I don't know if law enforcement agencies outside of Guyana have any sort of links to this connection, alleged connection. I don't know. But I'm just asking Jack Deere, since he says that uh, the coalition did an investigation on his uh, bank accounts and he is clean. I don't want Jack Deere to tell me that he is clean. And that's my reason, Zaire, passport. And the other thing that maybe Jack Deere should answer is whether he has a bank account, not necessarily the Bank of China, whether, again, these are all questions not accusations. I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just asking some questions. Whether he has 
a bank account, not necessarily in his name. Well, of course, if it's not in his name, he's not going to say he's linked to a bank account in, in China or so forth and so on. And that is what uh, is of interest. And I want Jack Deere to answer those sort of questions about whether he has a bank account in China, whether it's in a different name, um, and, and whether he is familiar with any passport from Zaire, whether he knows or whether he has a passport from Zaire, Zaire, sorry, under a different name. Uh, I'm just asking a simple question, a simple, simple question. And now let's head back to Sue. He said that he's looking for Sue. In other words, he wants to kick Sue out. You think that he is going to be looking for Sue and he can't find Sue? He doesn't know where Sue is? Of course he knows where Sue is. Because if they can spend millions of dollars paying police operatives to trail the leader of the opposition and other people and other folks, and he is coming at a so-called press conference to say that he doesn't know where Sue is or he's looking for Sue to kick Sue out. You think, now he said that he rented that property to Sue. Does he, notice again how he thinks that he's so powerful and then he likes to say, oh, it's the law and the government will deal with that as to whether Sue, uh, M, M, O, what is it? Um, MOU and all these different things with some big hotel that Sue signed up for. And he's not going to touch on that. The government will deal with that, right? Yeah, right. But Sue has a contract with him. He is not going to go to the court to kick Sue out. He is looking for Sue to kick Sue out. Well, I hope Sue is sitting somewhere. I hope Sue is sitting somewhere safe. Maybe he is in the, um, the Chinese embassy, maybe somewhere safe. But Su has got to be very, very careful. I say this because under Jack Deo's stewardship of the country, a lot of things happen. Extrajudicial killings, all manner of things. A lot of things happen under Jack Deo's presidency. Extrajudicial killings, wrongful incarceration. Uh, people disappeared and all these manner of things, right? So we've got to we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. Sue has to be careful. Remember, even under Jack Deere's presidency, there was a guy named Bacchus, right? Bacchus wanted to give evidence about the death squad and Gadraj's involvement in the death squad. Gadraj was then a sitting minister of government, right? His minister of home affairs. And Shafiq Bakas wanted to give evidence or probably may have given evidence to the U.S. operatives in Guyana. And you know what happened to Shafiq Bakas, right? He disappeared. He died. His brother died. You remember that. But here is why some Chinese nationals in Guyana and outside of Guyana are fearful for the life of Sue. Mr. Mark. I believe every word of what Mr. Shu is saying. I am also afraid of a Mr. Shu. Mr. Shu, if you are listening, I don't want anybody to harm you. This is a serious thing. Corruption is big. And we Chinese have to stop that. Been bullied by Jack Dale and other government official to pay bribe is big all over Guyana. A Chinese to pay by bribe. Mr. Chu, I hope you to stay strong. Do not. We respect and salute you for your bravery, for coming up and speak against corruption in Guyana. Thank you, Mr. Chu. We appreciate you, Mr. Mark. Mark, I believe every word of Su Xian Sheng said. I am very afraid of Su Xian Sheng. Su Xian Sheng, if you are listening to me, I do not want anyone to harm you. 
圭亚那政府腐败很严重，这个是很严重的事情。我们中国人必须停止被那些政府用武力行贿。苏先生，我希望你能继续你的发表，也希望你在新的一年万事如意。All right, welcome back. Uh, that those are people who are supporting Su. They are fearful, um, and it is almost certain that Jack Dare knows that he cannot uh, even dare the kind of threats that he put on people's lives, uh, put people in black book, whether it's Chris Gale and all other individuals that he went after. Um, it, it is not. It is not going to happen. Uh, the Chinese will protect Su. And again, I go back in asking in asking this particular question. It's just a question I'm asking, and maybe、uh, Jack Dio and his handlers would be able to answer whether Jack Dio has any ties to this country, Zaire. Whether Jack Dio has a passport in another name,、um, um, a, a Zairean passport, or whether Jack Dio is、um, banking money in China. Whether Jack Dio is banking money in China. However, we we will find quite a few folks、uh, who are making money、um, under the installed PPP regime are going to come out to defend Jack Dio. They're not defending the rule of law. They're defending Jack Dio because he ensures that they make their little money. And so I noticed that this guy Nick Digo Boyer. Boyer or whatever、uh, is saying that having had the pleasure, of course, you have the pleasure of knowing the VP for a number of years. I can safely say that the Vice News interview is an attempt to smear him. Oh yeah, you will hear lots of those things coming from members of the private, the so-called private sector commission. Because you you think seriously? Do you think this guy, Digo Boyer, do you think he can? He could say anything different. His father became a multi-millionaire, hundreds of millions of dollars through National Hardware, got land all prime lands on the east coast of Demerara, all manner of things, all the sweet deals under ja Jack Dale's presidency, and probably enjoying it now. Do you expect? Do you expect anything better from these guys?、Uh, throw that in the garbage, man. But like. Like、uh, Isabel is saying, when we asked the VP of Guyana if he took large-scale bribes, he suggested we were lying. Now it's clear his close friend Su told us the same. He accusing him of lying. So everybody Jack Dio is accusing of lying. He's accusing those of us who are accusing the PBP of rigging the elections that we are lying. Every single person has a lie to tell, as long as it is not in favor with what Jack Dia wants them or Irfan Ali wants them to say. And this is what this is what Isabel is saying. First of all, he says Vice News is lying, and then Sue said the same thing about bribery and corruption. He says Sue is lying, and he's the only one that is telling the truth, right? All right, that's just my brief、uh, input, and、uh, I hope that you guys would approach this so-called, this so-called, what is called、um, this so-called commission of inquiry、um, with no seriousness, because it's 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 fake, it's a fraud, it's about propaganda, and it's about money or monies for the boys. That is what it is. Monies for the boys. Hundreds of millions of dollars will be spent on monies for the boys. Again, monies for the boys. The big boys will be making a heck of a lot of monies. All right. So that's it for me on this.、Um, that's just it. I'm looking at some of your comments, but.、Um, But I am just、um, thankful for your time. Thankful to be here with you guys, and、um, hopefully I'll see you guys later on this evening.、Um, if not, I'll just probably ask one of the guys them to sit in, or we will just do a rebroadcast of this if I'm unable to be on. But、um, 
I hope you've enjoyed to, uh, this afternoon's program, or this morning, sorry, uh, with telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And hopefully Jack Dio can stop his lies and his propaganda and so forth. And hopefully he'll say something about Zaire. And hopefully they will stop persecuting these individuals. And all of the charges are those guys on top, whether it's Brassington, whether it's Ashni Singh, whether it's Nandalal, whether it's Irfan Ali, 19 fraud charges, or even Claudette Singh and all these people, all these people, charges were withdrawn. But look at those folks at the bottom are still being persecuted. Even James Bond and James Bond, you know, James Bond feels though they like you. You know, James Bond, they don't like you. They don't like you. They're persecuting you all because you buy some little piece of lawn, James. Right? They're persecuting you. Right, James? And meanwhile, everything happening in the country. Maybe that's why the congressman said what he had to say. And they were all upset. They were upset. Uh, they, they get upset when people speak the truth. And Jock Dave and them will get upset because what we spoke about today is the truth. The not, nothing but the truth. That's what it is. All right. I'll see you guys. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of the day. God bless you all. And um, keep praying for Guyana. Keep praying for Guyana. There are people who are protesting right now. Uh, they were protesting in front of uh, the um, special branch and special branches headed by someone on the questionable circumstance, the questionable guy, right, at special branch. And then we're hearing now that uh, there's going to be an acting chief of staff, another questionable character. And they, these guys want us to believe that bright days are ahead in Guyana. Not at all. Absolutely not. Stay strong. God bless you all.